Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you also uh, very much for Stefano's invitation. I'm uh, very happy to be here. Uh, and thank you so much for giving me this uh, easy topic, uh, speaking about tantear knee pain in football is uh, maybe not so easy. Uh, there is a lot of um, things uh, when you are speaking about tantear knee pain. It could be nearly everything. Could be patella painful syndrome, dislocation, instability, psychologic problem, tendonitis, whatever. So the problem is to uh, make a diagnosis and we are not really able to uh, know exactly what we are talking about. And the goal of uh, this presentation will be to uh, give you uh, an objective uh, diagnosis, uh, treatment planning, and also speaking about prevention, because you've seen uh, yesterday that prevention is really uh, something important. Uh, the origin of, of pain in uh, the knee could be, of course, the skin with uh, the scars. When you do surgery, you cut some nerves, you cut some vessels, and uh, this could lead to anterior uh, knee pain. You could have some pain coming from the muscles, of course. You can have uh, some pain coming from... Uh, the ligament, this would be the tendonitis, and you can have also anterior knee pain or global pain coming from uh, the cartilage, the meniscus, and the ligament. But also think to the bone, and you have to explore the bone, and sometimes you have some bone edema, which will lead to, uh, to uh, some uh, pain. Speaking about uh, patella, uh, you have to know that it's a part of a global system. And it's a sesamoid bone with a B-articular muscle from the pelvis and from the tibia. And this is really important because uh, you could have a, a pathology on the insertion in the tendon, on the cartilage, and on, on, on the muscle. So it could be nearly everywhere. The general agreement about that would be that you have uh, abnormalities in this pulley uh, system. This could be uh, on the local uh, system, the local anatomy with the trochlear, patella, cartilage, soft tissue, restraint on the knee. This could be more global, speaking about the alignment of your, uh, of your uh, extensor mechanism uh, and also the torsional things. And uh, think of, of course of the power activation with the central system, speaking about muscle, brain, and uh, everything of, uh, about that. What you have to know is that uh, when you have some uh, stiffness or muscle asymmetry, this uh, will uh, 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 give some uh, overload uh, on this pulley, and this could lead to, uh, to pain. And this is really important to understand that. So to make the diagnosis, you will uh, have uh, several things. The patient history, of course, the clinical exam, and the radiology, which is an objective uh, things. You could go to a clinical and uh, classification and maybe after that you will be able to uh, have a treatment and uh, speak about prevention. The clinical history is uh, mostly a combination of uh, concentric quadriceps contraction plus somewhere an overload strain. And this will increase the pressure on your patella, on your tendon, on your muscles. And um, speaking to your patient, you have to ask some specific questions. If it's a trauma, how is the trauma? It's a jump reception, hyperflexion, hyperextension. If you have a direct contact with a local hematoma, so you have to uh, uh, ask very specific questions to your patient. If you, about the functional signs, uh, you have to know, of course, if it's uh, during the sports activity, if it's after the sports activity, if it's a chronic, how long lasts the pain, which is really important in tendonitis, uh, if they have some uh, functional weakness, and uh, if they have also uh, some uh, functional um, uh, uh, importance. What is really important, uh, speaking about anterior knee pain, is uh, mostly if there are any changes in the, the activity. If the, your patient got a higher level, or a higher level, if he uh, uh, is uh, playing more than the year before, if he has a new coach, a new trainer, a uh, new uh, physical therapist, he has a new position in the team, 
that's really important to look and uh, search for any change in his uh, activities. And that um, will uh, maybe uh, make you understand that there is an overload on the, on the knee joint. And uh, this could increase the pain. How is the pain? And uh, when you speak about uh, patellofemoral pain, most of the time it's pain in flexion. It's really uh, understandable because when you flex the knee, you will increase the forces on the, on, on the patellofemoral joint and uh, going downstairs will increase five times your body weight on this, um, on this joint. Sometimes your patient is speaking about instability and is coming to you and say, I have a dislocation or instability. And make the difference between what is a mechanical instability. A mechanical instability is always a, a dislocation. The patellas goes out from the trochlea. And uh, it always occurs in uh, high energy activities with uh, m arthrosis the first time. And this is what we call the objective instability which is really different from the uh, instability symptom, which uh, uh, it's a feeling of instability. Uh, it's a, like a giving way when the patient is walking, going down and uh, downstairs, and it's a quadriceps inhibition. The pain leads to a quadriceps inhibition, and it's a subjective instability. But your patient maybe tell you in, uh, that he has a dislocation. So be aware and ask for the right question for that. The clinical exam, two are very specific, the apprehension sign. When you push the pattern outside, it will uh, make your patient frightened. The abnormal tracking, it makes um, uh, the diagnosis of uh, high-grade trochlear dysplasia, and this is uh, objective pattern instability. This is not anterior knee pain, for sure. All the other signs, like um, uh, the location of the pain, medial, lateral, the mobility, we're using the quadrant method or the medial test, uh, till, uh, test and also the uh, tendon palpation are really important. But those uh, uh, clinical uh, exams are not so uh, specific, and you will, you will not be able really to make a diagnosis using, using that, for sure. The Q angle, I call it the question angle, because uh, it, uh, it says that uh, it's a good way to appreciate the alignment of your knee, but you see this lady has a tremendous Q angle. It's unbelievable, and she has really nothing. She's not painful, she has no instability, so this is a subjective evaluation, and it's not precise enough, so be aware of this uh, Q angle for sure. The global analysis is really, really interesting. And you look, you, you, look, you have a soccer player and a dancer, a ballet. And you will uh, make the uh, examination of the stiffness and the muscle asymmetry. And you see this uh, soccer guy is really, really stiff on the anterior chains. Big difference. And you, if you look uh, to this video, you will understand why the man is uh, coming from the monkey. Look at that. It's unbelievable how this guy is stiff. So you must understand that if you are stiff like that, you should be painful somewhere. So this is a very important thing to measure, quantify the muscular stiffness of the uh, rectus femoris, the hamstrings, and everything. So test your patient. The morphotype is also very important. And the external analysis, looking to your patient, walking in your office, is really important, and uh, also to make a good analysis of the rest position. And you see this patient is really asymmetric. He has a pelvic inclination. The shoulders are not on the same way. And also, if you look uh, on the sagittal uh, plan, it, it will be uh, asymmetric. So this could lead to uh, um, asymmetry of uh, the limbs, and uh, your patient will tell you that he has a shorter leg which is not a shorter leg, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, a bad balancing. That's really important. Sink to the back, and also think and test the core, the muscles uh, of your back, and how the patient is able to control his, uh, his uh, limbs while he's uh, going up, up and downstairs, while, when uh, he's, um, he's uh, jumping. 
Then you go to the last step. The last step is the imaging of the patellofemoral joint using uh, X-rays, standard X-rays, using MRI, using echography or arthrocity. The question you have to ask you is, is, is this knee normal? And you know that we have uh, some uh, uh, really uh, identify uh, patellofemoral abnormalities and there are four instability factors, which are the trochlear dysplasia, the excessive TTTG, the, ex the patella alta, and the patella tilt. And you have to look at that to know if your knee is normal or not. And um, uh, the first is the trochlear dysplasia. Trochlear dysplasia means that you have no groove or you have a flat groove. This is uh, really important, and to uh, understand that, you look on the sagittal view, a true profile, and you will have three points on the medial facet, the groove, and the lateral facet. And depending on the position of these uh, three points, you will be able to uh, uh, classify your trochlear dysplasia, and you have to know that uh, in 96% of the dislocation population uh, group, you have a, a, crossing, uh, a trochlear dysplasia, and in a normal population only 3%. So if your patient has no trochlear dysplasia, you could be sure that it is in, in, the, in the category of a normal guy. Uh, how to uh, use the axial view? The axial view is also important, but you need to have a good axial view at 30 degrees flexion. And um, check how is done your axial view. And uh, to know if your axial view is a good one, you have to, to have two-thirds on the lateral and one-third on the, on the medial uh, trochlear. And if it's like that, you are able to measure the sulcus angle and to measure the trochlear dysplasia for sure. Then measure the patella height. It's really easy to, to do. You can use the caton de index or the insul salvati index. And this is really important. And we have patella alta in 30% of the patella instability group and no patella alta in the control population. So it is a very strong sign, measure your patella uh, height. You can also measure it on the MRI. You can also uh, check the engagement of your patella in your trochlea. And if you have no patella in front of your trochlea, you could be sure that it's a true patella alta. So that's really important. The shape of the patella is also important using the Weiberg classification, but also on the sagittal. And then on the sagittal, it's good to use the uh, uh, Grelzamer index and you will be able to know if you have a, a, a very special nose of your patella, which could lead to a patella tendonitis. So look at this patella on the two uh, horizontal and uh, sagittal. Uh, but ultrasound and MRI. Ultrasound is uh, good, but it's really dependent of your radiologist you have. MRI is, uh, is um, more interesting because it will show you the tendon tear, it will show you the location, and it will show you also if you have a bone impingement with your tendon. So in conclusion, what uh, can we say? We can say that uh, anterior knee pain, you can have an objective analysis and definition. You have two things, the intrinsic factors, and we have uh, uh, seen them, the patellofemoral anatomy, the stiffness, the morphotype of your patient. But also check the extrinsic factors, which are the sports activities, the excessive trainings, and also the iatrogenic things. And the doctors sometimes could be uh, iatrogenic, also the physio uh, <laughs> sometimes. If uh, you have no anatomical problem, for sure, no surgery at all. If you have mus muscular stiffness, morphotype, gait, you have to do a gait analysis. You can do a physical testing. About the muscle strength and deficit, the isokinetic uh, evaluation is really interesting. And using the ratio be between quadriceps and hamstrings and also testing the internal rotator are really important in the diagnosis. And then you will be able to correct them uh, with an adapted protocol. For sure, the prevention is really the best. And this, uh, you, you, you've seen that yesterday, it's a really good thing, for sure. But I would say that for anterior knee pain, we can maybe ask for uh, two uh, other player in this, uh, in this game. And the two other players could be uh, to add the stretching, uh, the stretching, stretching exercises. 
uh, global, from the head to the two. And it's really important to have a global view of your patient. And the second will be uh, to uh, have a very back and core control uh, related to the lower limb. The, the body is, uh, is something global, and it's really important to, uh, to do that. So to win the, the, the Patera Champions League, you need to have a good diagnosis, eliminate an, anat uh, an anatomical abnormality. You can treat the cause and spend time explaining your patient because patellofemoral pain is time consuming and sometimes a little bit boring to explain to your patient, but you have to spend time with them. And then the prevention will be to have a very good uh, muscular balancing and using that, you will really prevent and stop the pain and also to listen to these good conferences. And if you, are, if you want to come to Lyon and speak about the patellofemoral things, come in September in 2012. Thanks so much. Thank you.